Why is my internet so complicated? Let's figure it out. All right, so we're back downstairs and we're setting down. What was all of that? So let me explain. So I live in a rural neighborhood that has approximately 70 houses, but unfortunately we only receive AT&T DSL and the max bandwidth for that is a lousy 1.5 megabits. Now the neighborhood beside of us, not so much. They receive 100 megs down. So I had a little bit of a problem because of my job being a network engineer. Um, I needed a quick access to the internet, but I also needed speeds that were pretty decent, nothing too crazy, um, but something that was pretty decent enough to do file sharing and stuff like that. So if you notice in the attic, there was a device and that was this guy right here. What is that? Well, it is an antenna. And if you haven't figured out why I have an antenna, you're probably thinking, well, do you have satellite internet? Don't. So that antenna runs down to the black box that you saw on the floor, which is this guy right here. This box is a Mofi 4500, and guess what? It's LTE based. So LTE is what I use for my internet and how I receive a connection out that is fast as I do. Now LTE certainly has its problems, but I did my best to address those issues and I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a moment. So once it connects down to this Mophie, it runs down to the black box that you saw on my server rack on the top, which is a custom built PFSense box. Now this is what routes all of my traffic uh, through my network. It's where I have my virtual interfaces set up that tags or excuse me, that routes my VLAN traffic and it works for me. What is unique about it is you'll notice over here on the side, I have something that says Air VPN. What is that? Well, with the LTE, I have some connectivity issues that I face. Um, one of the main things is NAT problems. You are probably aware if you're a network engineer that there is some rules that are applied that when you're routing traffic out through an LTE device that is not typical for a home network and can cause some restrictions. So because of that, the way I address it is, is I set up an open VPN interface on my PFSense box here, which then routes the traffic through the internet and through our VPN servers, which runs uh, open VPN. Now, because of that, what's great about our VPN is they allow port forwarding. So I can then turn around and set up access to my internal network and port forward devices in and out of the network, which is great. So what I actually do is I have it applied to where my PFSense will take traffic from the VLAN, which I use tag traffic of 25. If someone connects down to this SSID of PNC Z lab, it will grab an address from this pool down here and it will shoot it out the PFSense box and through our VPN. This map uh, isn't really a complete diagram. I don't have interface labels, uh, but for the most part, everything is straightforward. You'll see that I have a device here as well. This is an XCPNG server where I have several VMs residing on, uh, most of which are for labbing work cases, uh, and whatnot. The other device I have here is a Unify access point. This is what I use to send tag traffic in and out of my, you guessed it, Unify switch. Now I do have another device that is below that, which I'll get to in just a second, but the, SSD, uh, the SSIDs that I have set up are these three right here. And these three are tag traffics for VLAN 29, 27, and 25. Now VLAN 27 is something that I no longer use, but here in the future, I will be using it again. I used to actually have 
the AT&T DSL and I tagged that traffic so I would have had another router here that would have connected to my Unify switch and that traffic would have then been routed out to AT&T. The DSL connection I ended up canceling it because I never needed it. This solution worked so well for me I was able to cancel the DSL service and just straight use LTE. You'll notice I have a device here and this was the third box in my server rack. What is this? Well it's pretty exciting. So uh, I have a Plex server that resides on this box here, and I had a problem. My problem was if somebody that was in my family wanted to watch some of the movies I had, um, typically we would have went about uh, with the DSL. They were able to just, you know, pick up the server through port forwarding and do that. Now, I probably could set up our VPN to do that. However, I wanted something a little bit different and a little bit cooler to say that I did. Uh, so I did this purely for entertainment purposes, but I have a Cisco router. And on that Cisco router, I have DMVPN configured and DMVPN reaches out and it's attached to my Unify box like so, which is then trunked over to a VLAN on my PFSense, which then routes out through the internet into um, the cloud. So once it reaches the internet, it then is routed through AT&T and it passes through to my brother's house, which he then has a Cisco server or Cisco router set up, which matches that traffic and is able to process it to where I can remotely access stuff that he has on his network, as well as he can remotely access stuff on mine. That is pretty much it. I know it's extremely complicated and I hope that I explained it to the best of my abilities. This setup works great for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but let me show you something that's most important. Here's the moment of truth. Let's we'll see what happens. So 40 milliseconds, pretty good. But look at my speeds. You'll notice it's about 10 and it's kind of sticking there. Sometimes it's dropping down below. The biggest problem with LTE is network congestion. So it's 12 o'clock right now. Maybe there's a lot of people that are on lunch breaks. Maybe not. It ended up getting about 13, but I have the max I've received out of this on certain days is 30 megabits per second. So is it reliable? Yes, it's still a lot better than the 1.5. However, depending on the network congestion at the time, you may not receive 30 megabits 100% of the time. Now with 5G technology coming out, that is gonna substantially improve uh, stuff like what I'm doing and actually Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T are now coming out with fixed wireless services to do what I'm doing. I'm just using a reseller that I found that is really great to do this with. Uh, it's not the cheapest option, but it does work. So I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I could do a follow-up video if anyone's interested about the actual configurations on the devices that makes this stuff work. If you're interested in that, be sure to leave a comment below. I really do appreciate you guys joining me today. Have a wonderful week.